Who giveth this woman in marriage? Ask John's father, uh, Pastor Gumbest, to lead us in prayer, please. Our Father, we come to you this, this afternoon. We want to say thank you for the opportunity that we have to have been here. We ask that you put your hand of blessing upon this union between, between John and Emily. I ask God that they'll raise up. Uh, a godly seed to your honor and your glory. They'll love each other with all their hearts. So they'll love you supremely. In Jesus' name we thank you and pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Appreciate all of you coming today, and for those of you who didn't get to see little James come down the aisle, he had a little chalkboard that said, John, here comes your girl, okay, and uh, it's hard for some of you on the outside to see that, but uh, that was uh, a note for John to make sure he knew what was coming, I guess, and um, we appreciate you coming to be a part of this wonderful occasion this afternoon. Uh, both fathers would like to give a few words of blessing and encouragement to the couple, and uh, we'll have John's father go first this afternoon. Well, we do thank you so very much for coming out to be with us on this afternoon. I, uh, when John first was asked to tutor uh, Emily with some uh, subjects, math in particular, I said, John, you need to be careful. <laughs> I said, uh, where you invest your, 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 your treasure, that will your heart be also. He said, oh, Dad, I'm all right, I'm all right. I've already talked to, I've already talked to Ron Moreland, and, and, and everything is going to be watched and guarded and everything. My, my thought was, well, maybe she's fat and ugly. <laughs> and uh, then I saw her, and I said, this is not going to work out very good. And uh, I, I said, John, now I'll, you really think you ought to be doing this, uh, teaching uh, Emily? And uh, he said, no, Dad, everything's all right. That's what he t told me every time. I wondered, really, what he had in the back of his heart and mind. 
but uh, the Bible does say that for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And it uh, looks like it drifted her way. <laughs> and so, but we are rejoicing and happy for, for John and Emily, both of them. And we're asking God for his blessing upon this marriage. Amen. With all of our hearts. And we ask that they'll go and serve God faithfully wherever it might be. Many of you know already that they are intending to go uh, to Africa for a period of time in January and come back after a year and then continue some work and deputation. And we're asking for God to put his hand of blessing on both of them. Our heart's desire is that John will walk close to God. And Emily will do likewise, and they will worship and serve God faithfully together. And uh, uh, just uh, rejoice in the developments of how things have gone. And uh, we thank God for what he's doing and has done in the lives of these two. Amen. Well, I don't know if you guys actually came to the wedding to see them get married or to see me lose it. <laughs> so, no, this is a, uh, a great day, and a great day of prayer is being answered. That's right. And uh, the day she was born, we gave her back to the Lord, and we started praying for her spouse right off the bat. We pray for all of our children and their future spouses, and I think that's very important when you have children. So we've been praying, John, that her spouse would be tall and handsome. We got the tall part down. <laughs> and then we just, <laughs> but we do, uh, we pray that be a strong, good, godly character. A person that my daughter can look to for encouragement, for security, and for good godly counsel and spiritual growth. And today I don't lose a daughter, but I gain a son. So pray for me, if you know John. <laughs> but he's been a truly, truly a blessing to me and our family. And I'm glad to have him on board. So, John, first of all, I ask you to love God more. And then love your wife. Emily. How you doing? <clears throat> doing good? Good. I ask, or well, when we prayed for, we prayed for you, you know, and I think we've done pretty good to bring you up as a good, godly woman. And it's funny, when you bring up children, you wonder how successful they're going to be and how successful you were in bringing them up. I think for both the combats and us, we see success. So, as you get ready to take him as your husband, I ask you to love God more and then love him. Because you see, when we love God more and put our right perspectives in place, then the love for a husband and wife grow closer and stronger and more faithful to each other. And for our church, for the witnesses that are here today, we're seeing another prayer being answered, even from far across the seas. Not only was our prayer answered in finding a good man for our, my daughter, and then seeing my daughter grow up a good, godly woman, but there's unreached people groups that need to hear about the Lord. And you're looking at two people that's heard that calling, and it's totally surrendered to God's will. There's no other place better to be than in the will of God. So we're seeing prayers being answered overseas as somebody's praying that somebody will come to them and show them who Christ is and his kind of love. Now, as you get ready to go to the Congo someday and work with the little pygmies, we got to get pictures of that. <laughs> Two tall, white, pale people. <laughs> we're going to have small pygmies in the jungle, but their hearts are given to it. So, and our family supports both of them. 
So I just pray that the Lord will bless you from here on out. And God will bless your marriage and your family and your ministry. And we love you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Pastor Cumbus. You know, I, I read not long ago, John and Emily, that, and I think you're a picture of this, that the best way to meet a mate is you run as hard as you can after God. And if you see somebody keeping up with you, introduce yourself. And maybe that's what happened here. I know the, I know the math tutoring story. Uh, Emily told me about that, and it got to be less and less tutoring and more and more talking, and, uh, and well, uh, <laughs> she'll be doing the teaching from now on, but uh, I didn't want to tell you that, but, you know, he mentioned their calling in their life, and that, of course, is the most important thing uh, to John and Emily. In fact, th this is the second most important day of their life. For many, you think this is the most important day, but... In reality, it's your second most. I think the second most important decision you ever make is who you're going to spend your time on earth with. And uh, that's, that's vitally important to your enjoyment of this journey called life. But the ultimate and the most important decision is where will you spend eternity. That's the decision that has to be made, and that determines so many other decisions. And one thing John and Emily wanted to make sure that was clear to everyone who attended today was that the most important day in their life was the day that they understood that they were a sinner who needed a Savior and that Jesus Christ was a Savior they needed. And they called upon Him and asked Him to be their personal Savior. And uh, the whole, you know, one, one, their great desire is that Christ would be seen in their wedding. And uh, many times, unfortunately, in our world, there's not a great deal of distinction often between what's called a Christian wedding and a, someone who's not a Christian. And they wanted there to be a distinction in their wedding. And so uh, my encouragement to all of you here today, if you're here and you've never come to the realization that all of us are, have sinned in the sight of God, that all of us, because of our sin against God, deserve to pay a penalty for that sin. That sin ultimately will separate us from God forever in a place called hell. But that's why God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. That He might live a perfect, sinless life and then die on the cross as a payment for your sin and for mine. Christ died for us. And He took our place. And when he died on the cross, he had no sin. He was the only perfect one that ever lived. But he died for our sins. He died in our place. Three days later, God raised him from the dead. God accepted his son's payment for our sins. And that's what God says each of us must do. We must, by faith, accept Jesus Christ and his payment for our sin as our hope for heaven. And he'll give us the gift of eternal life. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The gift that God offers is eternal life, and it's a gift, which means you cannot earn it. Some people think, well, you get eternal life by going to church, or you get eternal life by keeping commandments, or you get eternal life by being good. Well, then you are trying to earn it, and you cannot earn a gift. A gift is given to you because someone else has earned it. Someone else has paid for it. The gifts you brought for John and Emily, uh, they know that they're going to open it. And what will they do? They'll just receive those gifts. Be, but they also understand somebody else paid for it. Well, the gift God offers to us is eternal life. And we realize someone else paid for it. And that someone else was his son, Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross. And God simply says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you'll call on the Lord Jesus and from your heart ask Him to forgive you and ask Him to be your Savior, that gift of eternal life could be yours. And I speak on behalf of John and Emily to tell you nothing would thrill them more than for you to come to them and say, on your wedding day, October 2nd, I receive God's gift of eternal life. 
and I ask him to be my Savior. It doesn't have to be any, no big fanfare, no big, uh, you know, uh, you just have to quietly from your heart, God's looking at your heart, and you trust him as your Savior. Nothing would thrill this couple more than that. They've dedicated their lives to taking that gospel uh, to people who've never heard the name of Jesus and uh, do not know what Christ has done for them. We're excited about what the Lord has in the future uh, for John and Emily. All right. Well, John and Emily, if you freely and deliberately have chosen each other as partners for life, I'd like you to join your hands at this time. John, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife? Will you love her, honor, and keep her in sickness and in health, in poverty as in wealth, and forsaking all others, keep the only unto her, so long as you both shall live? Do you so promise? Emily, will you have this man to be your wedded husband? Will you love him, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health, in poverty as in wealth, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto him as long as you both shall live. Do you so promise? John, I'd like you to repeat after me the following words. I, John, take thee, Emily, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part. Emily, I'd like you to repeat after me the following words. I, Emily, take thee, John, to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love, cherish, and obey, till death do us part. John, do you have a token of your love for Emily? You do. Okay. What would you have, John? You have a ring, all right. See the ring? Okay. The ring is a symbol of your love for Emily, and that's a, it's, it's round, perfectly round. It's never-ending. It is to remind you not only of John's love for you, but of Christ's love for us. It's never-ending, and it's unconditional. You can put that on the third finger of her left hand. All right. Very good. And Emily, do you have a symbol of your love for John? You do. Very good. She also has a ring for John. And you can go ahead and put that on the third finger of his left hand. And again, that ring will just be a constant reminder to both of you when you look at it of your constant love you're to have one for another. All right? At this time, they're going to light their unity candle. The parents have lit the candle indicating the life that the Lord gave them. And now those two lives are becoming one. There's a math issue for you. Two becomes one. And their lives will blend together now. And they'll do that with the unity candle. And you listen to the song while they sing. When the sun is shining bright, I'll be yours forever. When you face the darkest night, we will face it together. Through the good times, I'll be there, clinging warmly to your hand. When there's no one else to care, I'll be there to understand. Yours forever, only yours. I'll be yours forever. Yours forever, only yours. God has brought us together on the wings. 
you came, then you taught me how to fly. Through the years it will be the same. I'll be yours forever. When I look into your eyes, I can see us together. Our love blossoms sweeter. There's a place inside my heart. I know only you can fill. Until death will never part. You're the keeper of my heart. Yours forever, only yours. I'll be yours forever. Yours forever, only yours. God has brought us together. On the wings of love you came. Then you taught me how to fly. Through the years it will be the same. I'll be Heavenly Father, we thank you now for this afternoon. We thank you again, Lord, for John and Emily. We do pray your blessing upon their union here this afternoon. And among these witnesses, Lord, I would ask you that these in attendance today would know their responsibility as witnesses to these vows. And Lord, if ever John or Emily would waver from those vows, that these folks would remind them that they were witnesses at their wedding. Lord, I pray that their love for one another and their love for you would increase more and more. Lord, you'd use them in a wonderful and a great way to reach others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And may their relationship always reflect the relationship that you have with us as believers. Bless them today, Lord. Thank you for all these that have come to be a part of their special day. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. For as much then as you, John, and you, Emily, having offered yourselves to one another, believing that it is God's will that you be husband and wife as your pastor and as an officer of the laws of the state of Ohio, it is my privilege to pronounce you husband and wife. John, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> And what God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure that I introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. John Combest. Now they're going to come right back in and going to reenact some things and we're going to get some pictures taken, okay? And you get to watch it happen, all right? So uh, they're going to come back in if we can find the bride and groom. And, uh, <laughs> check all the Sunday school rooms, all right? Here they come. Come right on in and uh, assume your places here and uh, 
Our photographer has a list that he's going to get, and uh, we'll go through this in a timely fashion for you, all right? We're going to reenact some pictures. They'll go out again. Brother Moreland will share a couple things with you at that time, and then John and Emily are going to come back in and dismiss you row by row so they have an opportunity to talk to each one of you, okay? All right. A little forward, you're back a little too far. There you go. Keep a good line. There. No, no, you're good. Thank you, John. I'm just going to get out of the way.
We really need to pray for everybody that's going to come in contact with that new couple right there. So uh, they're going to come back in, and then they're going to dismiss you row by row. So once you go out, you guys are more than welcome to go ahead and help yourself and start eating. Okay, you don't have to wait for the bride and groom to go out there. Go ahead and uh, grab your plates, fill up, and, um, and then go uh, be seated. We're asking that the, uh, in the fellowship hall in the building... Uh, is for family, okay? And then uh, out in the tent, we got set up real nice for you. In fact, that's where the dessert is. Um, somehow, I don't know how that worked out. But um, out in the fellowship hall is for everybody else. And I greatly appreciate it. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. Pray for the meal. And then uh, they're going to come in and dismiss you row by row. All right? Our gracious Heavenly Father, once again, Lord, we're uh, so honored to come before your throne today. Lord, we thank you for this uh, wedding. And... Um, for just going so well, and Lord, we ask that you bless John and Emily in their life together, and uh, bless their ministry together, Lord, and we just thank, thank you so much for everyone that's come in and traveled in so far to see this and to be a part of this family and this fellowship. Now, Lord, we uh, thank you for this food. We ask you to bless it to our bodies, bless the hands that made it, and Lord, we ask that everything is said and done will be in glorifying to your name, and let us have sweet fellowship together as family. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.